has limiting the dribble had any effect on players' natural attacking instinct? And how did you combat this as a staff? Yeah, so like I, to be to be honest with you, I've uh, I've broken it down to how we would work in in summertime. So at our level in the summertime, we get eight weeks with our players. So when we brought these concepts or this style of play to our team, what I just took you through is pretty much how we broke it down when we would do workouts with small groups. So they would understand the concepts because we, if you look us up, we're a good offensive team. We're very good with ball screening, but every team just works on ball screen defense every day of the week. So we wanted to just bring a different con, uh, different style, but there, as you guys can see, there's a lot of similar concepts. Um, you know, uh, the, the first thing we negated was we would play uh, like four on four, just filling those perimeter spots like uh, I had diagrammed at the start and you couldn't dribble because so many kids right now don't understand passing and cutting and spacing. So we just really limited. And even by the end of the year, we would still, we call it cutthroat. We would still do four on four on four, cutthroat, no dribble. Um, and it is amazing how the pace of cutting and the ball movement just picks up because guys know that they have to move with a particular pace to get open. And then they know they have to cut with a purpose so they have to score. So when you first start, and if I'll go back to it, this very first diagram, and it, it uh, here we go. Even with, I would just start, if you had a group of eight or a group of 12, I would just start with these four spots filled with bigs, guards, and whatever, and all you can do is pass and cut. And you'll be amazed how all of a sudden you're cutting and passing drastically improves and then all this, you you yourself will figure out which kids really understand how to play the game um, but as I showed here a little later on as the one thing I would say about offense you need to let your players play so you can see what they do good and what they do bad take what they do good and run with it and alleviate the bad. So if you're a really good pick and roll basketball coach, you'll be able to incorporate some of these concepts in the pick and roll uh, after some initial ball movement. We have another question from coach John Maddich. John, can I get you to turn on your mic, mate, and then you can ask coach? I, I can. Um, I guess everything you've shown today has been uh, with the set plays. Do you have any passing comments on how you'd recommend coaching through movement like through breaking or just increasing the the speed of the play transitioning down a court yes yeah, so here let me go back to i'll just keep this original diagram up um just for space and purposes so uh us us as a transition team uh one through four we we one through four can push the ball we want our, uh, the two guys initially getting to the corners for spacing purposes. And let's say this is the guy bringing the ball down. We want this guy just spacing a little wider so the guard has some space. And then our five man's either rim running if he can beat his guy down and then getting to the dunker spot. Or if he's behind the play, he's going to come in and drag ball screen. So once our transition opportunity is no longer, then we're going to flow into, we, we'll just call out passing game. Our point guard or whoever has the ball will just say passing game. And let's, hopefully this answers your question, but ho let's say this was the five man and our four man or three man was just down here for whatever reason. They're going to back screen their way out. But if this is a big and he, he moves the ball slot to slot, he's pinning down. And then he's working his way back to one of these spots so he can, first of all, post up to be a scorer. We, we actually have a very good post player, but he's better once he's on the move. So we've just felt within our concepts and having him move, he can create better post-up opportunities um, through movement. And what our players have recognized with him is when they're down here and the bigs up here is coming off a flare, curling, and then getting him on that UCLA cut, and that's good action. And but as I said, like if if you have guards that understand setting good screens, they're the ones that are going to be the recipient of something good offensively. 
Another question Good, for your thank program. You. Yeah. Another question for your program, Coach. Uh, mm -hmm. In relation to teaching this kind of offense through breakdowns, what amount of time during practice do you spend teaching the breakdowns on air as opposed to advantage, disadvantage, or straight three on three or four on four? Yeah, so uh, like the way we break it down is in, in the summertime, we get uh, four hours a week with our players. So we break that down into three 40 minute segments. Um, so to start practice, uh, we'll either do uh, two on two or uh, sorry, two on O or three on O, uh, depending on our numbers. To like today, we're going to highlight flare screens. Today, we're going to work on pin down, or today, we're just going to work on passing down and cutting through and filling over. So, we're going to have a concept or a couple concepts of the day. We're going to start that, you know, something on O, so our guys understand what we're looking for that day. Then, as we move through our workout and we we're playing live, whether it's three on three, five on five, then, then our guys come together and understand the concepts that we're really trying to highlight because this was the first year we added passing game. So we, we wanted to do some hole and we wanted to do some part, but we also needed to figure out which guys were good in what situations. Um, you know, uh, if, if you have a non-shooter who's a perimeter player, getting them to the wings so they can flare slip is is a great great thing and and it's amazing i i know probably not at 12s and 14s and maybe 16s depending on your overall iq but guys just all of a sudden morph into know where they can have success on the floor um you know uh, it, it's amazing how players figure out who does what good and they find them put themselves in those positions but um we, as I said, in, in the season, though, we do a lot of four on O or four on four on four before we go to five on five because we want, we want the space on the perimeter because, as I said, the thing that we really highlight is trying to get ball movement amongst these guys and then getting it here and driving it baseline and then getting into our drift concepts. Um, now, we're lucky. We, we, got, we got some good guards that can really get to the rim and put heat on the defense. Um, and that's, that's why we we're preaching these guys of, uh, up towards the foul line. You know, this is probably the most relaxed position. We'll let them be as far as this low, because if they get any lower, you're negating getting to the outside. 